Welcome, everyone, to Vegas Revealed, episode 32. We are talking with the rock star of the art world, Michael Goddard. He's seeing a lot of silver and black now with a new collaboration in the pro football world. Oh, we had a great time talking with him exclusively at his home. Wait until you hear some of his stories, and we also chat about that new collaboration. All coming up on Vegas Revealed. This episode of Vegas Revealed is brought to you by Vegas.Pizza, the virtual pizzeria with homemade New York recipes and delivery straight to your door. Be sure to check them out on Instagram at Vegas.Pizza. Be sure you spell it out, Vegas, D-O-T, pizza. Vegas.Pizza, fresh, fast to your door. We are back and it's time to talk Las Vegas. I'm Dana Roselli. And I'm Sean McAllister. And Dana, this is like the first time in a long time we've done the podcast, not only face to face with each other, but also with our guest. I know. It's really cool. I mean, we stopped by the the Elvis Wedding Chapel. Remember that Graceland? Yeah. That was quick, but we were very, very, you know, distant and kind of had to practice some different kinds of rules there. And we did that uh, when we stopped by Michael Goddard's house as well. But it was just nice to kind of sit intimately for as long as we wanted and just chat. Yeah, it, it's definitely a different vibe seeing somebody in person rather than uh, doing a a conversation over Skype or Mm -hmm. Zoom. So we're excited that uh, we're able to do that this week. And we're also excited because here in Las Vegas, the Mirage Resort is now back open for business. That's right. You know, we talked about it last week. And right now we're actually recording on a Thursday. And this is actually the official day that the Mirage opened. So we're seeing all the pomp and circumstance. And it's a lot of fun and exciting uh, because it's always great to see pictures and videos of the dolphins that are at (laughs) the habitat there at the mirage people love those dolphins they do and you know some people kind of know about it others don't but i mean the dolphins are always there in the back of the mirage and then they have the siegfried and roy's secret garden with some of the animals too but um you can go back there and you can actually feed the dolphins you can sign up for different kinds of experiences you can watch them doing tricks it's really cool but Judging from the responses on social media, there's a lot of people who don't realize that the dolphins live at the Mirage. I guess not. You and I were cracking up at this post that one of our local news organizations did, you know, that said they welcome back the the dolphins. Great pictures of the dolphins there hanging out, doing some tricks. And a bunch of people that must not live here in Las Vegas, it looks like they live out of town, are like, oh, so the dolphins actually live at the Mirage? Or... Yeah, that's what I'm asking. They live there? And it's like, yeah, yeah, they live there. (laughs) Like, what the hell do you think? It's not like there's some dolphin playground out in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of California, and they're they're not, like, bust in for the day. (laughs) Of course they live there. They do. They live there. Like, what do people think? I don't know. I don't know. They're not living in Lake Mead down by the Hoover Dam. A tunnel that goes underground and then leads them back to the coast of California for the weekend? I mean, come on, people. (laughs) I know. Oh my gosh. Yeah. People, people, people are funny, but you you gotta, you gotta really think before you answer, (laughs) um, which, you know, Twitter is a lot of just, uh, a lot of people not thinking before they respond to things anyway, right? That is the truth. (laughs) But the dolphins are great. Did a story there just about a year ago and yeah, they take really good care of the dolphins. And I must admit, like when we went there, they were like, You know, be careful. There's going to be a lot of animal activists out there that are going to respond to you and and be frustrated about the whole animals in captivity. And and the only thing I can say to that is the experience there was that they were treated really well. And there's not just like one little pool. Like it's a huge area. It's a complex, yeah. It goes underneath and above and there's a lot of room and they seem to be treated really well. And it's a great experience about teaching about, you know, water life and that's the thing is they have school groups through there that learn about all that stuff marine life and so it's a learning experience too and another part about the mirage reopening that's pretty cool is that they've renamed the street that leads from uh, las vegas boulevard the strip up to the front of the casino and it is now siegfried and roy 
Drive. Of course, the Mirage is where Siegfried and Roy performed for years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we recently lost Roy. It's it's been such a tough time. You know, during these times that we've been all suffering as well, um, Roy passed away a short time ago, and it's been hard on, on Siegfried and hard on the community that watched them just, you know, Changed the way shows were done. They were they they made them big and spectacular, and you know laid the groundwork for for magic and it just uh, incredible incredible duo that made such an impact in Las Vegas. Yeah, and uh, Siegfried Fischbacher was out there for the the naming of uh, this this street Siegfried and Roy Drive out there. Um, so it's it's nice to see that their legacy is even more cemented in uh, Las Vegas history than it already was. Yeah, exactly. And we're happy to have another resort casino open because it means we're moving forward. So uh, again, the Mirage officially opened. Uh, As far as we know, no other planned openings on the Strip. I did see that the Tropicana was supposed to open, I don't know if it was September 1, and that got pushed again to like September 15th or 19th or something like that. So that's not going to open for a little while, and we'll have to keep updated on that. Yeah. And what do you say we just jump right into uh, this week's interview, Dana? Yeah, it's going to be a great conversation. Yeah. So Michael Goddard, he is the top selling artist in all of the United States who also calls Las Vegas home. Goddard's art is instantly recognizable thanks to his wildly popular olive characters that are seen in most of his paintings. I guarantee you have seen or bought one of Michael Goddard's paintings. We are with him right now inside his Las Vegas home. Michael, thanks for having us over to your house. My pleasure, my pleasure, my secret lair. Oh, (laughs) I just love it. How has quarantine been for you? You know, it's really different. Um, A lot of times, uh, most of the time I'm traveling, so it's nice to actually be home so that I can create. So any time of day I can sort of get up, I set a studio up in my garage and and uh, and uh, have a lot of fun. But trying to, well, I bought some gym equipment, but I haven't really used it yet. But it's a beautiful decoration. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's nice to look at, you know? <laughs> it is. Well, and, it is. and quarantine has kind of uh, presented some unique opportunities Absolutely. for you work-wise. And it's enabled you to really dive into the pro football world. Yeah, it's kind of, uh, it's, it's kind of odd. Um, my... Uh, when I first heard about the Raiders coming to Las Vegas, of course, I got really excited because they're going to be right here in mm-hmm. Vegas. And uh, they had done the groundbreaking and all that. And I'd watched some of the episodes of From the Ground Up, which is super cool. And then I thought to myself, you know what? I want to be part of this somehow. Yeah. So uh, I went, uh, I made a, an appointment uh, with, uh, it's the best meeting I ever had because everybody in the room was named Mark, except for <laughs> one person. So I had Mark Batane, Mark Scher, Mark Davis. <laughs> And uh, sat in there and just said, you know, hey guys, I'd uh, love to work with you. And uh, you know, if you need uh, if you need help with anything at all artistically, that's what I do. No, no money, nothing like that. I just want to be part of it and help you guys create the best uh, best thing that I can. So uh, I started doing some little projects uh, for them uh, over a few months, and uh, they called me one day and said, listen. Um, we would love for you to uh, consider curating the the art for the entire stadium. You know, handling uh, everything from lighting, framing the art. Ooh, and I'm like, yeah. oh, okay. Well, that sounds good. I said, but you know, the obvious the obvious uh, issue is that I'm traveling. And they go, oh no, we're willing to work around your travel. So I looked at my wife, my jaw dropped, <laughs> and I said, we can't pass this opportunity up. It's my chance to leave my footprint here. And then, um, of course, COVID hit. And uh, I've had nothing but time to really delve into it. And it's funny because had uh, COVID not happened, then obviously I'd be on a cruise ships and would not have been able to spend the time that I needed to for something that's so epic and important. And uh, so back, uh, I want to say seven, eight months ago, um, uh, they hired me on uh, to uh, to just kind of work with all their different uh uh, people that, that from tour management to mm-hmm. you know the community and uh, all the things that are going in and out of the uh, of the stadium. So basically, I, I'm I'm their interior decorator. We'll say. Oh my god! What <laughs> pretty cool interior decorator! Oh my gosh! Right? What an honor! Right? Oh, oh my gosh! <laughs> I told them it is like. Um, working with the pharaohs of Egypt, that you guys have built a pyramid. We know the stadium's going to be here for hundreds of years, and millions of people are going to see it. There's 65,000 uh, seat capacity, I believe. And, uh, you know, not only is it uh, sporting events, uh, or not just football, but it's obviously, you know, concerts and 
uh, you know, soccer tournaments and all, uh, not tournaments, mm-hmm. but uh, soccer uh, events. Mm-hmm. Just, it's going to be just uh, epic. So to be part of that is a thrill. Sometimes I can't sleep at night and I'm just like, I can't, I can't believe this is happening. I'm pitching myself. <laughs> well, and th- through this opportunity, not only are you leaving your mark on Las Vegas, right. but you're helping other Las Vegas artists do the same thing. Absolutely. When I first sat down with, uh, with uh, Mark Davis, uh, he said, you know, God, let me kind of share what my vision is. So we talked for, you know, uh, many hours. And uh, it's really about the community. It's absolutely about the community. Everything about that stadium is. And, uh, and it's, uh, it, it's just really nice to be able to have that sort of a focus that is going to make it unique from all other stadiums. Um, uh, the art that's going there, obviously, we're pulling from local talent, and that's what is a really a big difference. Uh, that uh, that is, is going to be something really cool to see. Mm-hmm. And obviously, you have uh, people that are coming from everywhere. They're com- coming from Europe. Maybe it's their first football game, but it is Las Vegas. And uh, I was telling someone the other day, I said, you know, even driving down the strip, you see the M&M store in McDonald's, and it's lit up like it's a neon casino. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> true. That, yeah. And that's the way we have to do it. So yeah. for me, it's a matter of trying to bring the absolute best uh, that I possibly can because everyone's seen everything mm-hmm. and so when you have the biggest baddest stadium ever built in the world like and it's Vegas you know from coming to a Knights game every hockey player uh, wants to play in Vegas all the fans it is a show and uh, this will be no less than that it's going to be incredible people are going to be blown away yeah and I think sometimes when you think football football stadium even the tickets sometimes you know art doesn't really cross your mind I love how they're bringing art I mean I feel like it's a way to bring kind of everything together you know I mean people that are interested in all sorts of different things yeah absolutely so um, with the ticket artists um, uh, every one of them is a a, a local artist artist and uh, some of the artists I found in Container Park or uh, uh, the Art District uh, but we have an incredible pool of talent right here in Vegas. Everyone f- from people that show in galleries all over the place to people that are, you know, doing Im- amazing graffiti art to decorate our downtown. Mm-hmm. So it's uh, it-, it was exciting, especially to get them involved. Somebody who never thought that uh, that they would be uh, get to yeah. you know be involved in that. So, but that was also quite a process. Yeah, <laughs> uh, because artists are a strange breed, as you probably imagine. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes I I'm thinking, oh my gosh, so. Yeah, Goddard, how can you help my art career? Well, let me see your business card. Well, what's that? Oh, okay, that's where we're at. But, you know, incredible talent. So um, that's the, that was the, the first job that I had with them, really, was to uh, help find some art to create the tickets. And uh, Mark Davis's idea was to have every one of those tickets say something about the experience of living here in Vegas. Mm-hmm. Um, the main focus of it is uh, the new stadium, of course, so that's sort of the subject. And, um, uh, well, no, it is the subject, Mm -hmm. but different parts from other people's perspective. You know, I mean, there's a hundred ways that you can, uh, you know, tell somebody something and arts the same way. Mm -hmm. And uh, some really, really unique uh, expression and uh, visual. Uh, well, you know me, I paint olives. That's ridiculous. Yeah. But. <laughs> but you make them look so, so cool. Listen, and t- you were showing us some 3D layering things that you're doing. So this, yeah. is this is this new for you? or what, Well, on. you know, I, I got my, my hands in a lot of different uh, uh, pieces of pie. So <laughs> I, I have my own art, of course, which I sell to the cruise lines with my olives and all that stuff. I have another company um, where we do the production for um, uh, artists and photographers like Nat- National Geographic. So I do all their printing for all their galleries. So it's amazing. You walk into our office and you see a, a photograph that's, you know, 20 feet long that somebody was in a tree for two months and took a picture of it. And then we have um, another, uh, another business where we do laser cutting um, on special materials uh, for um, indie, mm-hmm. which is uh, really cool. I also have another business that we print all the faces of uh, slot machines. So a lot of the Almost all the casinos that uh, have slot machines here in town, uh, we do all that stuff for them. Uh, there's You're a bunch busy. of stuff going on, yeah. <laughs> Man. But you know, when all this happened, uh, you know, February, March, uh, we totally shifted gears. So obviously, the cruise lines not uh, going very well, mm-hmm. um, and uh, you can't really get on a ship right now and feel safe. But um, so I shifted uh, from s- sort of that sort of falling out, and then we took our laser cutters and we started making um, uh, COVID masks. So we made them for the city. I think we made a couple thousand for the fire department here. And, uh, you know, it's kind of like the alcohol company switching over to sanitizer. Right. right. So yeah. that's, uh, yeah, but it's, it's been fun. And, and one of the, the Max Art Productions uh, basically takes uh, 
hobbyist photographers, artists, and they come in and we uh, help them produce their artwork onto either metal or canvas or whatever. So I already had a pretty good pool of artists that I had access to, mm -hmm. and uh, so that was very helpful with the with the Raiders thing. Mm -hmm. Cool. And people have gotten their first glimpses of the art that you've curated. The mm -hmm. season ticket holders got a pretty impressive oh. uh, delivery method for their season tickets. Yeah. What's been the reaction you've heard so far? A absolutely incredible. Um, I actually didn't know that they had been sent out. I was told and uh, that they had been sent out. And all of a sudden, um, someone posted... Uh, I think on Instagram, oh my gosh, Goddard, I love your, your, your ticket, your game ticket. I'm like, huh, huh, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and then someone else sent me a video and I watched them open the box. So you open up the box, inside is a mini stadium. I mean, they went all out to do this uh, for everyone. And, uh, and then I was like, wait, 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 show me the other tickets. I want to see, you know? Yeah. And uh, first thing I did was talk to the other artists who we've been talking about it. Kind of. It's like Fight Club. First rule of Fight Club, you don't talk about Fight Club. Right. So absolutely, uh, everyone signed a non-disclosure agreement um, before even being considered to, to uh, do it. Because we wanted to let the Raiders share it in the way that, you know, uh, yeah. you know that they wanted to. And, um, and uh, so that happened. So... Um, I, I started looking at the at the tickets through these videos, and I did a couple like uh, uh, screenshots off my phone, mm -hmm. and then I called up the artist. Said, "Oh, I got something to show you," and literally, uh, I would get a media. I get a phone call and they're crying on the phone oh my god i can't believe this is happening i go listen me too don't make me cry <laughs> yeah but you know it's exciting when you think about uh the tickets not only are they doing that but um you know game day there'll be uh, uh posters uh, free posters of the ticket art as well as the program mm -hmm. but the coolest thing about it is this local local artist except for one todd marinovich who is a, a raiders alumni he actually did some of the art as well wow. that's so, so cool. uh, oh man and and it's really different it's so oh, it, it's awesome stuff yeah. And I think it's especially, obviously special this year because it's the first year, but also because a lot of the folks that have tickets can't actually go to the game. So to do this yeah. for them and make them still feel like, thank you for getting the season tickets. We'll be back. We'll be bigger. We'll be stronger. Well, <laughs> yeah, and I'll tell you, rumor has it that these uh, uh, that the tickets uh, and the box and, and, and all that are already skyrocketing mm -hmm. through uh, eBay because they're a huge collector's <laughs> item. This is the inaugural, uh, inaugural year. Yeah. And... Um, the other thing that's really cool is uh, when you visit the stadium, you'll be able to see the actual, excuse me, the actual paintings that were made to make mm -hmm. those tickets. Mm -hmm. And they're a labor of love. Uh, when I um, am doing something, this is how I explained it to the artist. I said, you know, if I'm doing an album cover for someone, I said, I know it's going to be seen by millions of people for probably 30 years. They're going to download it on iTunes or whatever. So you slow things down a little bit. It's not like doing a, a logo for, you know, so-and-so's vacuum cleaner business. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> all, all of the rest, I mean, the artists were like stressing it. They're like, oh, is this okay? Is this okay? And, um, uh, you know, I kind of just uh, wanted to give them as much freedom as possible and let their own, uh, you know, emotions and feelings come through. But it, it's every artist bringing their absolute best. Mm -hmm. I, you know, even for me, um, you know, I have uh, my art in galleries all over the place and millions of people see my art every year. It's it's and that's it's cool. But when you uh, when you see the, the ticket art, I mean, that's going to be seen by 65,000 people, you know, perhaps uh, at every event. You got 20 events a year. It's going to be there for 10 years. So it's going to be something really neat to see. And the artists are thrilled beyond belief. Yeah. You know, me too. Me Huge. too. I'm excited. And is this like, an, an yeah. ongoing partnership like beyond the inaugural season um yeah so oops um <laughs> yes so uh it is um i'm going to uh, well we couldn't do everything this year because of uh, uh, uh the financial uh, uh, problems that uh that COVID has put on many businesses so we're going to be looking at it into next year too but um but it's going to look well it, it's going to be finished mm -hmm. um but uh yeah back to the ticket art well, listen, it's it's still like Fight Club, so there's lots of exciting sure. things that are coming uh, that I really can't discuss yet. Yeah, well, we um, like that. That means it's extra yeah. special. When well, you can't say anything, you know it's good. I, I got <laughs> this is so funny. So when I first meet Mark, 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 and Mark and Tom, uh, I told them I said, uh, "Listen, I've got this design that I would love for you to look at, and it's uh, sort of you know uh, the Raiders uh, welcoming Las Vegas, vice versa." Really super cool piece and so I showed it to them and they're all super excited oh my gosh Goddard I, I we want to use this for our programs for our tickets and all this other stuff we want to make t-shirts 
And uh, I go, awesome. They said, uh, have you shown it to anybody? I go, you know what? Only one person. And they go, can't use it. I'm a what? <laughs> and they go, we don't want anyone to know. We don't want the NFL. We don't want, uh, we don't want to let the word uh, get out to the news, anything. We really want to keep it hush-hush until we're ready because we have this master plan of uh, getting all this local talent and we're going to be doing some really fun things. So I'm still kind of, you know, uh, it, in quiet mode is yeah. kind of weird, yeah. right? right so, you right. know, uh, even when, I, when I've been allowed to talk about certain things, I'm like, uh, am I allowed to say that? You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, super, super, super uh, excited because I think people are just going to be blown away. Mm-hmm. Uh, absolutely blown away. And, and how long have you lived here now? Well, my history with Vegas goes way back. I lived in California. That's where I was born. But my grandparents, my grandfather worked here at the Nevada test site. Mm -hmm. So since the early uh, 60s, I came out here as a toddler. And then uh, eventually uh, my, my parents had split up. My mom stayed in California. My dad lived here, uh, moved to Vegas, and uh, I went to Clark High School. Mm. Uh, later, I went to UNLV, um, discovered something called gambling, and I got sent back to California. <laughs> and, uh, and then happens, I moved here uh, permanently from California mm. in 2003 um, to make this uh, my full-time home. And that was mainly because we have such great tax benefits right. here. Yeah. You know. it's, well, that's what we were talking about. When you were walking us around the house and stuff, we were chatting about, um, obviously, what a great place it is to live and make home. And mm-hmm. also, all the, the other people that live here, too. Right. I mean, Vegas is a great town. Tons it of is. celebrities and performers. And, and some of our listeners from around the world are always interested in that stuff. So, I mean, yeah. I know you've got your kind of core group that you hang with here, too. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's, it's fun. And I'll tell you, Dana, the, um, I, I still get asked, so do they have grocery stores in, in Las Vegas? <laughs> right. do, they, do they have school? And well, yeah, actually what we do have, we have, uh, we have Lake Mead, we have Mount Charleston, we have any kind of activity you could think of at any time of day. Uh, we are three hours from three and a half hours from LA, uh, five hours from the beach. I mean, literally it's just a a great town with everything. Great schools, you know, um, I don't know. I I love, love this town. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. it, Love it. I couldn't imagine being anywhere else. No, no, it's cool. Do you have any, do you have like, what's like the... And then this is always puts a lot of pressure on people because I'm asking you about like, what's one of the coolest stories? Like if you could tell our listeners like something, just a cool Vegas moment for you oh, over the years. Cool I know it might take a minute to think, but I'm sure there's been many, but. Well, sift through <laughs> them. I know because you've had a million. <laughs> yeah, no, it's. Is there uh, ever a night out or a cool, I don't know, a lunch or a, or something behind the scenes that you know, nobody I, would ever think I'll happened. tell you a funny one. I'll okay. tell you a funny one. So um, I, I'm, uh, one of my dear friends is Ozzy Osbourne, okay. right? And so every time he comes to town, he or he and his assistant, he and Sharon, uh, come by and visit. So he has a favorite restaurant that's over at the Wynn. And uh, went to a birthday party here and some other stuff. But anyway, so one night we are, uh, we're, we're, first we got together for lunch. And I'm with Sharon and uh, their assistant, Michael, and Ozzy. And we're in the restaurant, and uh, Ozzy says, I'm going to get up to use the use the restroom. Mm-hmm. And I think his exact words were, oh, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> and uh, anyway, so he gets up, and, you know, five, six minutes later, you know, we see him walking in, and all of a sudden, I hear Sharon, she's right next to me, and she yells, just like on the old TV show, yeah. Ozzy, <laughs> you're sitting at the wrong beep table. <laughs> so, oh, my God. So then he comes back, he comes back, sits down, and he's exhausted because they had just done the show. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm talking to him, and he's falling asleep. I go, wow, am I exciting? <laughs> so Sharon leaves. So this is an epic day. Oh. Sharon leaves, and, um, and uh, later that evening, we have dinner together. And so it's just, you know, Ozzy and I. And so we start to get up and, and uh, walk through the casino and, um, and, oh, a couple of people come up that wanted a picture during dinner. And sure. I said, listen, can you just wait? I felt like I was his bodyguard. Right, right, yeah. yeah. I'm like, you know, just, just, just hold off a second. <laughs> so I said, you know, Ozzy, so tell me what it, uh, t- tell me what's that like for you? Do you know, do you want to be bothered? Should I be filtering these people? He goes, you know what, Goddard? He goes, every time I go out, I say to myself, I don't want one bleep person to talk to me. Like, I just want to be left alone. He goes, but if no one comes up and talks to me and asks for my autograph, I'm devastated. <laughs> that makes so, sense. It's so true. That is such oh. a. That makes complete that was sense. Fun. So we walked, we're walking, uh, walking him out uh, to the uh, or towards his room or whatever. And as we're walking, of course, a fan comes running. Oh my God, it's Ozzy Osbourne. He goes, Ozzy, and he was exhausted. He goes, Ozzy, can you can you take a picture with me? And Ozzy says, No, nah, about tomorrow. And he, he said, Well, I'm not going to be here tomorrow. He goes, Neither am I. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness. 
<laughs> Goodness. And it was, it, well, you know what else was really, really odd? Because uh, he had, uh, he's had lots of shows here, but go to the concert, right? And I'm in the green room with him, right? Before the concert's about to start. And it's literally, it's just him and I, right? Chilling. And uh, he's on his little uh, treadmill or whatever, you know, he's mm-hmm. just staying in shape. And uh, so it's all done. Someone knocks on the door. Okay, they're ready for you, right? So then uh, they take him out. I hear, I hear the rumble of the crowd and all that. I, I you know, walk out to go watch the concert. And uh, anyway, you know, there's 50,000 people there. Mm-hmm. And then afterwards, you go back to the green room, and it is the weirdest thing because there's 50,000 people who, who are all screaming crazy, you know, and there's so much energy and so much excitement and all that. And then you walk into a room, and it's just like a sitting here, it's quiet. Right. And you're like, oh, wait a minute, is that what, what happens next? Like, that was kind of like a. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's a crazy world. It is. I mean, it, being it a, is. A, a rock star right? is, I mean, it's a total. Mm-hmm. Dichotomy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and I know that people who are, are used to seeing you and have seen you mm-hmm. before may be surprised to see that you've cut your hair. You have a new oh, short did. hairdo. Yeah. I and did. I know that that goes back to the beginning of the year, but yeah. since we've been on lockdown, it's very, it's very different. Um, I'll tell you, you know, it was kind I like of a, it. Thank, I like you it <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. Yeah, I've had long hair for forever, and I started growing my hair out uh, for something called Locks of Love, mm-hmm. and we have a lot of... Uh, a lot of involvement. I, I, people ask me what I do. If they don't know who I am, I say I'm a philanthropist. That mm-hmm. is what I do. It's yeah. the most important part of what I do. So I'd grow long hair and I'd grow it out and then I'd donate to Locks of Love. And um, and then I, I was kind of like ready for a life change. A lot of things were, were going on in my life. I had gotten sober and um, ah, just just some big, big changes mm-hmm. and uh, got married. And, and uh, anyway... I, I thought, you know what? I, I thought with my long hair and all that, I'm sort of personifying, you know, the rock star. That's how I got labeled the rock star of the mm-hmm. art world. It was mm-hmm. just because I had long hair and people always assumed I'm Nikki Six. I don't know. Now I look like, you know, uh, Chris Kardashian. <laughs> but, uh, but you know what I wanted to do? I really, honestly, I, I didn't just cut my hair short. I literally shaved my head bald. Oh my god! And I wanted to humble myself, and I I told I told Leanne, I you know after getting sober, uh, I thought to myself, you know, man, am I going to be fun again? Am I going to be as romantic? Am I, you know, all these weird things go through your head uh, when in, during uh, getting um, during sobriety. Yeah. And so I had all these things attached to who I you know who I thought I'm not even sure who I am, yeah. and um, and it was a really really good change, obviously, and and I'm still living, which is even better. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, but I wanted to do the same thing with the hair. It's like, you know, uh, for 20 some years, I've been the rock star of the art world. And I thought, you know, if I took away all the glitz, if I took away, you know, I mean, back in the day when, uh, and, uh, Chris, uh, Angel had his show on. So we were all about wearing all the jewelry, all the diamonds that we had. That's what, we, that's, it was a bling world. Sure. We'd just come out of the, you know, other generation where, you know, the, the, the rappers and all that. So I don't know, is it that you just wear all your grandma's jewelry, right? Like you're wearing everything. <laughs> it's cool. Right? And I really want to strip it down and say, you know what, I'm just going to, I'm just going to be myself. I'm not going to hide behind, you know, will people still like my artwork if I don't look cool or mm-hmm. whatever, whatever nonsense was in my head. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it was, it was really scary. I mean, I had no idea how scary it is to just you know, cut all your hair off, and uh, no, nah, I'm I'm loving it. I'm much more relaxed. You know, I'm getting yeah. I'm getting up in years now. I have an AARP card. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. <laughs> lots of life changes for you. It, yeah, lots. <laughs> but you you look happy and healthy, and oh, yeah. I mean, really, it's yeah. It's no, great. thank you, Dan. I, I yeah, we've been really happy. It's just you know, uh, Sean and I were talking uh, a little bit yesterday, and. Um, we're just saying how it's so funny. Like we, we can never predict how life's going to go. Mm-hmm. Obviously, it's not our first rodeo. Every time the world gets a little bit too cocky, uh, 2008, 2009, we had you know the great you know uh, uh, bubble. Everyone's losing their houses, foreclosures. Business got way too comfortable, thinking life you know life was always going to be good. Before that, even when we had uh, uh, the twin towers. Yeah. Um, uh, 2001, uh, there was 13 galleries at that time in the Aladdin and, uh, only two of them survived. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so it, it's devastating, but, um, I think, uh, you know, at this time it's, a, it's, it's time for another change and, uh, you don't want to get too settled and think that you've got everything figured out. Mm-hmm. We're going through something obviously very unique to our times. 
Um, you know, sort of, it could, I didn't know if it's going to turn into like how it was during the depression mm -hmm. with businesses going under. And so, uh, all these disasters, uh, we have, we have microcosms of that in life of our own little disasters, what we think are disasters. And then later on, we find out that unless that circumstance had happened exactly the way it did, mm -hmm. our lives would not be what, what they are today. For me, you know, I was an engineer for uh, 12 years, a mechanical engineer. <clears throat> and uh, when I got uh, laid off, some people say fired, uh, but when I got laid <laughs> off, uh, Mutual you know, <laughs> it, pushed me into, uh, it pushed me into finding something else that I enjoyed doing. And, it, and for me, it was art, and now I've been doing it for 20 years. But hindsight's always 20-20. Mm -hmm. And no matter if the tragedy is, you know, uh, a lot of, I've lost a few friends, you know, um, uh, during this uh, uh, COVID, mm -hmm. and uh, it's heart heartbreaking. And I, I like to think to myself, um, bad or good, that there's a reason for everything happening. I really yeah. believe that. Yeah. And, you know, when you look back, you go, wow, man, if I hadn't had that crazy, if I hadn't dated that crazy gal and <laughs> known what I didn't want, I would never be so happy with my wife. Right? right? <laughs> right? No, it's true. It's true. It's, so. all, it's all a pattern and a lesson, and we learn, and we kind of construct the life that we want to be in. You know, especially as we get older. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm in that category now. Settle down. As we get yeah, older, we all are. You know, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think uh, you know we're all sort of woven together in this invisible mm -hmm. fabric. Um, I do think that things don't happen, say you know, by accident. I really don't. I think, but you have to put yourself out there at the same time. Yeah. Obviously, like with the Raiders. I told them that I wanted to be involved and put that out there. D did I think I'd ever get to do a ticket myself? No. Mm -hmm. Did I ever think I'd be curating, you know, the biggest, baddest stadium in the world? No. Um, but there's no way that I would have been able to do uh, it the way that I, it should have been done or the way that we're doing it now if uh, COVID hadn't hit and yeah. had I not uh, stopped with the cruise lines and all that other sure. stuff. So now it's, it's the biggest blessing I've ever had in my life. And who saw it coming? Mm -hmm. And that's how career changes happen. That's how, so many things in life are like, you know, um, are, are like that. Um, we were just talking, my wife and I, the other day about just how we want to expose our kids to everything that we can as far as sports and, mm -hmm. you know, all that stuff. Because you never know that one uh, little kid who, uh, you know, picks up a skateboard one day and rides it and turns out, you know, that's the love of his life. And then he's got his own TV show called Ridiculousness, you know. And <laughs> right. You know, yes. I mean, it's just a skateboard. We have a friend of ours, uh, you know, who's uh, their daughter is a very, very uh, talented uh, equestrian rider. Mm -hmm. And I, I talked to her and I said, man, so how did you fall in love with a horse? She goes, well, you know, one day my dad just took me for a horseback ride. And I, I fell in love and knew horse. I want to be around horses for the rest of my life. Wow. So, and that's how you guys are with microphones. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And they listen. It really is. You enjoy it. We were like, we want to keep doing this, but we want to have longer conversations. And it's yeah. just like, it's been, you know, just as joyful for us too. Yeah. You know, just something that we love and you continue on. You just kind of do it in a little bit of a different way. Well, I'm excited what, about what you guys are doing. I think thanks. that that's oh, super, you. super exciting. <laughs> and, um, uh, it's, you know, I, I, I like the change too. I know it, for you guys, it's mm -hmm. gotta be a little scary because it's different. It is. We can easily navigate our lives when we're that's what we do every day even if it's chaos like mm -hmm. we can navigate it and uh the scary thing is opening up that uh, door walking into a dark room and obviously i think a mm -hmm. lot of good things are going to happen you know with you guys you certainly have great t uh, taste in uh, interviewees <laughs> I know that. well we do <laughs> yep we do it's true and this is only podcast what 30 are we on 32 31 30, 30, 30, wow 32, 32 early 30s 32 yeah early, early 30s, 30s so <laughs> early you're right 30s. You're, you're in the you're in the top 40 I, oh, <laughs> nice nice oh my gosh so, I got a funny story for you. Okay. So uh, I'm talking with a, a friend of mine, a uh, very dear friend, actually. His, his name's Danny, and he uh, was the best man at my wedding and just a super cool guy. Well, his son is obsessed with me. He's uh, uh, eight, eight, nine years old. Name is Elvis. Oh, I love that. <laughs> and uh, Elvis wants to know everything I'm doing. He knows the names of all my paintings, all this stuff. All of his book reports are Goddard, 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 right? Mm -hmm. So I was cracking up. So... Uh, Danny comes over and says, God, I got a story to tell. I go, yeah. He goes, um, I see my son, you know, he's working on his homework and he's kind of struggling a little bit. And uh, so I go over and say, so what are you doing? He goes, well, I'm doing a book report. And he goes, oh, what's it about? He goes, well, it's about Michael Goddard. And he goes, oh, okay. Well, uh, what's it called? He goes, so it's the top uh, uh, 10 most famous artists in the world. And uh, he goes, oh, okay. He goes, well, why do you look so sad? He goes, you know what, Dad? I, I, can't, I, can't find Mike, I can't find Michael Goddard in the top 10 artists. <laughs> so he goes, so what'd you do? He says, so then I went to the top 20 artists in the entire world, <laughs> and I still couldn't find him. 
Here's how his dad saved me. He goes, son, let me take a look at that list. Looks at it, he goes, oh, those are all dead artists. Oh. Michael Goddard is a living artist. Oh, I love that. And saved me. Oh, oh my God. I love it. But, you got to oh, find good. the way that you fit in, right? Right. Yeah. Oh, oh, goodness. But, uh, yeah, yeah. He's such a cute kid. He was over here the other day, and uh, it was fascinating because I have a drum set uh, in the room, and uh, he wanted to play, and so we just let him, let him have at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Now, anyway. I, can you say, and I was just, you showed Sean and I a, mm -hmm. a piece of art, and mm -hmm. I won't say what it was, but um, that you thought about for maybe the stadium, mm -hmm. uh, but you said didn't fly through. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know if you can, uh, we're going to, we have social media, so we're going to, mm -hmm. if we can show people that, if they go to our social, mm -hmm. we can get some video of it. Are we allowed or no? Fight Club. Can't Fight do Club. It. See? Can't do it. No, okay. <laughs> we're not getting that, but we'll show you other cool stuff as we. <laughs> well, <laughs> I was I, just curious. I was just thinking, I loved yeah. what you did. You can't, we can't talk about well, it. We let, can't describe it. Let me tell you something that, that you will enjoy. So, uh, there is Raiders have a broadcast on YouTube called From the Ground Up. Okay. And we just filmed a few episodes where you can actually see the artists, uh, the local artists that are contributing uh, uh, to the ticket art um, and uh, also um, uh, some things with the stadium. But you get to see the. Uh, 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 the art say before it was finished mm -hmm. and then we're going to take you into the manufacturing side of how we're doing what we're doing and then a little bit about uh, so me, cool. me curating it um, but the cool thing is yeah a lot of things get shut down mm -hmm. and so I know this from dealing with uh, aristocrat gaming I had Goddard's Rock and Olives which uh, <clears throat> is now Buffalo. Uh, but anyway, but, um, but you know, what I do is I come up with a whole bunch of designs and you sit at a, at, at a corporate meeting with, you know, 20 different people who all have 20 different opinions. And that's mm -hmm. been very, uh, very tough. Not everybody likes everything. It's interesting. And uh, it is. I mean, for me, normally, it's like, it's like an ego check mm -hmm. because when I go out to a gallery or I want to, I paint whatever the heck I want to paint. When you're doing a commission for somebody, um, that's, you know, it's a completely different story. And, uh, you know, sometimes you'll be sitting at the table and it's like passing around the broccoli. Like you're going, mm, no, nope, don't like it, mm, don't like it. And then there's one guy in the end, I love it. And you're like, yes, <laughs> you know, and uh, same kind of thing. But the artists that we chose, uh, like I said, uh, not only the local artists, but they're really a quite a, a diverse uh, group. Mm -hmm. uh, I can tell you um, uh, they all have amazing stories. One of the artists, uh, his name is Vincent. He uh, came here from the Ukraine and uh, kind of started his life over. Huh. Sorry, okay. uh, kinda, uh, started his life over here uh, before uh, you know before becoming a struggling artist. Although he was schooled in Ukraine, he was a mortician mm -hmm. and uh, doing autopsies. He was a doctor, so the. Uh, Doctor slash, so he was dissecting bodies. By the way, wow. the guy's incredible at anatomy. Mm -hmm. Oh, I bet, <laughs> yeah. I bet. Yeah. But, uh, but, but stories like that, and now here he is, a Las Vegas resident, um, you know, getting an opportunity like this and doing something that the whole world's going to be able to mm -hmm. see. Mm -hmm. And it's story after story like that. There's um, another kid, uh, Pete Castro, who's just an incredible artist. Uh, they're all local. They're all right here and all just from uh, very, very diverse uh, backgrounds, ethnicity. Mm -hmm. We have some, uh, some uh, um, one of the girls, uh, Diane Zitska, uh, did a picture of uh, the Raiderettes. Uh, man, it's really cool. So if you get a chance anywhere you can, because it's out, you can actually see the uh, the tickets. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, That's and cool. uh, it, it's it's exciting and exciting because we're going to be sharing their stories uh, through Raiders.com. Mm -hmm. So one of the things you'll be able to do, you'll be able to look at the ticket art, you'll be able to find out who did it, what other stuff, where you can see them mm -hmm. here in mm -hmm. town. And uh, exciting, exciting for them. They all cried like babies. I'm still trying to get over <laughs> oh, that. Oh, I bet. Yeah. I bet. That's yeah. so cool. Well, we're so glad that things are going so well for you. Thank Thanks. you for the contribution that mm -hmm. you're Absolutely. making to a pro sports and to mm -hmm. Las Vegas. Yeah. And thank you for uh, having us over for a little chat. Yeah. A absolutely. And uh, hopefully when, when, uh, when all this sort of uh, gets back to normal, I'll be back to doing my gallery shows and things like that. You mm -hmm. guys can track me on my michaelgoddard.com or, uh, or my Instagram or Facebook and and since you're from here, I just had an idea, Sean. Let's take, take a quick little break. I mean, what if we come back with Michael and ask him his secret tip in Las Vegas? One of his favorite things. I love for it. For our Ooh. listeners. A special edition of our two tips yeah. is next on <laughs> Vegas Revealed. Love it. Vegas Revealed is sponsored by Vegas.Pizza. We know going out to eat may not be for everyone right now, and that's where Vegas.Pizza comes in. And it is so good. They have their own homemade dough and sauce. The recipe comes straight from an old neighborhood in Brooklyn, New York. And if you've had New York pizza, you know 
it is the bomb. <laughs> Vegas.Pizza Pizza is only available for delivery apps like Uber Eats, Postmates, and Grubhub, but it's easy and it's delicious. Oh yeah, they've got the classic New Yorker, which who doesn't love just a classic pizza? It's so good. Or you can try something called the bar stool pizza. That looks delicious. You know, we can't sit at the bar, Sean, and share it, but we can still have pizza at home or at work. Oh, there's no better food group than pizza. Vegas.pizza. Find it on Uber Eats, Postmates, and Grubhub. Hey, welcome back, everyone, to Vegas Reveal. This is usually time for Sean and Dana's secret tips, but since we have Michael Goddard here, we thought, let's ask him. He's lived here a long time, yep. worked here. He's got a great group of people surrounding him. Where, what, do you, what do you love to do in Vegas? Is there anything that, you know, you might have Goddard's a tip? Goddard's two tips, yeah. right? Well, listen, starving artists. So first of all, we need to talk about food. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> One of my favorite restaurants in all of Vegas is Bootlegger's Bistro. Mm. And they were the first restaurant that we visited uh, after all the craziness happened. And uh, the cool thing is, um, if you go if you go in the restaurant, not only do they have amazing food, but a lot of times there's entertainment, but it's very, very safe. Um, uh, the tables are social distancing is practiced there. That's really, really great. But if you want a good meal, a really, really good meal, um, and then uh, on the uh, on the wall as you go out, there's a bunch of photographs of different celebrities there, mm-hmm. and uh, it's the only place you'll see in any magazine anywhere else where I'm actually above carrot top. <laughs> so, <laughs> we've been on magazines together, but he's uh, he's always on top. So I got top billing there. And I was really excited yes. about it. But anyways, that's not really the secret. But the secret is is that the music that they have there is super super exciting, yeah. and mm-hmm. and, uh, and the food is amazing. The yeah. other spot, um, a lot of people go up to Red Rock Canyon, which is great. It's open now, super awesome. But my little secret is before you get to the turnoff where you go through the uh, and, and go to the 13 mile, the exit right before that, if you go down that little street and follow it out till it ends, there's actually like a park in there and that has all these really cool uh, trails. Oh. It has a, a barbecue uh, set up. So if you want a barbecue, there's tables and there's uh, shade and some really neat little trails that aren't super intense. So um, it's oh, easy to take the kids, the whole style. family on. <laughs> Me? And, uh, yeah. And it's just before Red Rock Canyon. I, I, I told my wife, I was just riding around on my motorcycle and I said, you know, hey, I just accidentally found this super cool spot. So we've been up there a few times and it's, it's amazing. I've always Magical. wondered what was down that road. Yeah. And there's I always drive right by it. Yeah. Right oh, by it. It, it, yeah. it's really cool. Yeah. Some amazing houses in there too, like big houses. Mm-hmm. Like it's 10 minutes from the strip or 15 minutes from the strip, but these giant houses that are have total seclusion, lots of horses and stuff. But there's a little park in there with all kinds of little hiking trails. I forget what it's called, but. Um, yeah, keep it I'll a find secret. it. There we yeah, go. There you go. I love it. And for folks that don't know, Bootlegger, um, that's so that's south of Mandalay Bay, closer to the Welcome to Las Vegas sign. So True. if you're yep. looking to find that, so it's still in the south vicinity. South Las Vegas Boulevard. Yeah, 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 it's still in the vicinity of the Strip, and I right. guess it could be considered the Strip in a way. It's still on Las Vegas Boulevard, right? Yeah, just yeah, down yeah. a little bit. <laughs> I did just down a little bit. <laughs> hey, listen, thank you so much for joining us. It's My been a pleasure. blast. You um, guys are welcome anytime, and I, I, I loved uh, I loved you before and doing <laughs> stuff with you, but this has been a great experience too because we don't have the time to really talk about intimate things we have we you know three five minute segment boom 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 you're out and i don't get to really like chit chat with you so it's yeah fun yeah this is a blast. It, it has it's been a treat michael thank you so much oh my pleasure Sean. <laughs> my pleasure it's it's a lot of fun yeah uh, all right thanks everyone for joining us we hope you enjoyed the show you can always catch us on social media we're at vegas revealed pretty much across the board do you have sites you want to share or we can just put them up? um uh, instagram goddard's crazy life mm-hmm. and uh most people misspell my name with two two d's in the middle it's g-o-d-a-r-d mm-hmm. and then uh on facebook i'm official goddard and I think that's I think that's it. Oh well, no, the post office has a thing about top ten most wanted. Uh, you know, so, <laughs> You're on that too. Yeah, and, and a milk carton occasionally. So yeah, that's a great it. way. Oh my god. And MichaelGoddard.com. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. MichaelGoddard.com. That's a great way to look and see what I'm doing. And uh, and soon Raiders.com. Mm. Yes. Mm. Exciting. When the cat's out of the bag, we'll come over and check out everything inside Love the stadium. Love it. That's right. We'll see you next week on Vegas Reveal. <laughs> 